What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then I'm gonna show you how to pick a winning niche. Yesterday I uploaded a video on winning products, but today it's gonna to be all about the niche. So the debate then between niche store versus general store has been going on for quite some time and it will probably continue to go on forever and ever. So if you are one of those people then that would prefer to build a niche store, then before you commit all that time and all that money to paying a designer, whatever it is, then you wanna make sure that you commit into a niche that actually has potential. So in today's video, Video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm just going to be showing you a couple of different research methods and strategies I use and then I'm going to be taking you through the checklist I used as well that I checklist off against every niche that I find and if I get the right answers back then I know that I've got a pretty decent niche um, on my hands. So that being said that's the topic. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the video and let's get straight into it. What's going on then guys, welcome to my computer. So let's jump straight into this then, picking a winning niche for your Shopify store. So just quickly then, just a few advantages, just in case you still are on the fence between whether you should have a niche store or a general store. The main kind of three advantages then to creating a niche store are number one, branding. Obviously it's easier to build up a brand of one particular type of product and obviously the stronger your brand becomes then the stronger your social media following becomes you'll get a higher customer retention and it kind of funnels down into all the different things as well such as upsells and cross sales which is point number two obviously if you're selling products all within one particular kind of niche then they're all going to be similar and they're all going to appeal to the same kind of customer so somebody coming onto your store then will be more likely to buy more than one product which is obviously a good thing and then point number three is marketing. So when it comes to Facebook then, if again, if you've only got kind of one type of customer coming onto your store, then the data isn't gonna be skewed. And every time somebody does come onto your store, they're gonna be con contributing towards that data that Facebook is gonna to use to pick out our ideal customers for you. And then the second point is no email segments. So basically what this means is that every time you gather somebody's email address, then they're, they're a potential customer. So when you have a general store, then you're gonna have people from all walks of different lives coming onto your store which means you're going to have to segment the your email list out between the different niches on your store so if you get 100 people on your store and you've got five different niches you might only have 20 different people per niche whereas if you've got a niche store then those 100 people coming on they're all for one niche so potentially you've got a better chance a better hit rate every time you market a new product or whenever you set an e send an email out then it's going to appeal and apply um, to a high percentage of your email list if that makes sense so that being said then let's move on to this recommendation which is quite important actually, which is choosing a niche that you have a knowledge of um, for a couple of reasons really. Number one, it'll be easier to pick products because if you're involved in that niche yourself, so if it's your hobby or if you own a dog, then you'll know because you live in it and spend time in it, you'll know what products are good if that makes sense. So for example then, so for example then I own a dog and I can go into a pet shop looking for a new toy for my dog and I will tell you straight away which ones he will destroy within a minute and which ones he'll destroy within an hour and which ones he just won't be able to destroy. And because I own a dog, then I, I have that information, I have that knowledge. So when it comes to picking dog products, I'll know which ones will stand the test of time, which ones people will find good quality, um, and which ones essentially will bring people back onto my store, which is the ultimate goal. The higher your customer retention can be, then the absolute better. And then number two, choosing interests. So for example, again then, I play golf. And when it comes to picking interests within your niche, then you want your interests to be specific to people who are already spending money in your niche because obviously we want to target people who are spending money in the niche, therefore they're more likely to spend money to spend money on our store. So for example, then the golf niche, if I was to say to you Tiger Woods, then probably everybody watching this video knows who Tiger Woods is. You might not play golf, but you still know who he is. So to target him as an interest wouldn't be a very good thing because it might include you even though you don't spend golf, spend money within a golf niche. But if I was to say Sergio Garcia, then you might not know who he is. And the chances are the only people who will are people who actually play golf because he's not a well-known golfer, if that makes sense. And if they're if they play golf, then they're obviously spending money within the golf niche and therefore they're more likely to be interested in my product, if that makes sense. So hopefully you kind of grasp an understanding of what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm not, I don't want to go into too much detail because that's not what this video is about. But any questions at all, then obviously just feel free, leave a comment down below um, or reach me on one of my social medias. All the links are in the video description. So moving on to the main bulk of this video then, which is actually how do you choose a niche? And there's kind of like three different 
um, points here that I like to consider when I'm thinking about what kind of a niche to go into. And then at the end, I'm just gonna take you through my checklist as well. These are the questions you need to be asking yourself when you've found a niche. And if you get the right answers back, then you know you've got a pretty decent niche. So number one then, if you're thinking about niches, try and think of trends. And when you come across a niche, then obviously the easiest and quickest place to test this is on Google Trends. If you've never used it, then make sure you check it out. Make sure you get to grips with how it works. I'll give you a short introduction now, just because it is a really powerful tool. So I've got a few examples then of niches to show you guys, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And the number one is shapewear. So when you put a search term into Google Trends, it's gonna give you all this different information. You can select different options. You can compare different terms as well. And as you can see, I've selected worldwide, 2004 to present. And as you can see, there's an upward trend, which means this particular search term is getting more and more popular, which means it's not a dying out market. If this graph was going the other way, then it would tell me that it's a dying out market, that people are losing interest in this product. And you don't wanna go into a niche for obvious reasons that's dying out. What one a couple well a couple of things really that I really love about Google Trends as well is the extra information it gives you. So it gives you the interest by region. It gives you the most popular countries, and these are country as long as they're countries you can target on Facebook, which nine times out of ten they will be. Then obviously it tells you exactly where to start with your Facebook targeting. Another thing it gives you as well is related queries. Again, it's always worth having a search through here because these might. They might give you like sub niches or really popular search terms within that niche. So as we can see here straight away, shapewear dress. So it's a really popular query within the shapewear niche. So again, it's just another line of interest to go down and do your research. Moving on to number two then, which is the heated vest. Um, I was speaking to somebody on Instagram about this product recently and it just I thought about putting it in this video just because as you can see, there's like speed, there's um uh, like peaks of interest usually around kind of winter time um, and what I've done is I've left it as worldwide so you can see what kind of countries where it popular is because what you want to do is if you're selling a trending product then you want to make sure that you know exactly when the trending months are and that you actually have products to replace the sales volumes when sales start to dip. So for example, then the heat vest is not gonna sell very well during the summer months for obvious reasons. So you wanna make sure you've got products to replace that during the summer. Whereas if you were to sell it in Canada, which is probably, well, as it says here, the most popular interest, um, most popular region, sorry, then it's gonna sell pretty much all year round. So potentially, North America and Canada is where you would want to sell this product. And then at the bottom, you've got your related queries as well. Uh, moving on to a couple more, just quickly, uh, the posture corrector, as you can see, the interest over time has just increased dramatically. So definitely something to consider. Um, and then again, you've got your usual information. And then you've got this one here, which is your environmentally friendly products. And what I would do then is if you found something you were quite interested in, I would simply just go and put those search terms into AliExpress, which I've done and these are going to give you product ideas. Um, so number one was bamboo utensils. Personally, I can see this niche becoming absolutely huge over the next couple of years, especially with the big uh, people on a massive hype about plastic at the moment. And to create a store that's all about reusable things, which is the next thing I want to show you guys, um, I think it's going to be huge. If you can create a brand that's around saving the environment and offering everyday alternatives to things like utensils, um, I believe the biggest, most popular product on here was the reusable straws, then I think you're going to be on to like a pretty big thing. Um, if you do it correctly and you brand it correctly and you spend the time and the money to build up the social media following, you have a really good message behind your brand and you could even team up with a charity as well and give like an X amount of your profits um, to a particular charity. Um, one thing to do is when you put a niche into AliExpress, just make sure you filter by the amount of orders and it's gonna give you obviously the products with the most orders. So it's gonna tell you which products are most popular. So in terms of niche ideas, that is point number one. Going back to the second point, which is passion. So there's one quick little tip I like to do to, tr to pretty much kind of tell, find out whether there's an actual passion for this niche or not. And it's really easy to do. All you do is go on Facebook and you just put in, I love, that should be in speech marks there. Get rid of those, just put it into Facebook, search for it. Um, make sure you filter by the actual pages as well. And it's gonna give you all these pages and it's just gonna give you ideas for niche. Like people, 
obviously look at the followings for the different pages and if a certain page has a massive massive following then it obviously tells you that people love that particular that particular niche or that particular subject or topic whatever it is so just scrolling down from top to bottom oh, i love family manchester you could maybe sell manchester related gifts wallpaper i'd probably stay away from that christmas again 2.3 million so it's obviously huge people obviously love christmas christmas themed gifts obviously we're past that point now oh, i love owls so a potential lead to go down there and again you could do the same thing if we just head over to aliexpress for example and if we just aliexpress will actually tell you if you just put owls in here then it gives you all the different search terms and if you just start with the top one so owl in jewelry and then again filter by orders it's gonna tell you what all the most popular products are within that niche. So again, there's so many different kind of routes and avenues you can go down. Um, what I recommend is just spending a couple of hours literally just diving into different things, cross-referencing everything. So you could go ahead and put our jewelry into Google Trends and see what kind of results you get. Um, and then finally, we'll go through that checklist at the end of the video as well. So where were we? Oh, I love. So just a couple of more examples for you. Um, oh, I love angels. Um, 110k like this would work in cats obviously cats is a really passionate niche um, and like I said if anyone's gone to the point where they were to create a page like this and there's a lot of people that actually like that page as well then it tells you that people obviously are passionate about that niche I love boxes which is obviously a brand a breed of dogs so that's it for point number two then which is passion the more passion you can find within a niche then the easier you're going to find it to actually sell products to that audience. And then the third and final point is size. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. If you just create an ad set within your Facebook ad manager um, and you can put the search terms into the interest and it's just gonna give you the size of the audience. And as long as it's a significant amount, um, then you should be pretty good to go. So if we just put in here, for example, dogs, and all you do is kind of like highlight it and 383 million, which is obviously huge. Um, and if you were say comparing different niches and you were to put say, um, I don't know, let's put uh, bird watching, birds and bird watching size 838 people. That seems a bit small to be, to be correct. But even all these other bird watching pages are like 15, 20,000 people. So you can kind of use that as a general guide to see how big a niche is but there's a couple other ways you can do it as well so google and google adwords so i've got this extension um i've got an example here to show you guys so i've just put dog bowl into google and it's going to give me the volume per month um, which again just tells you kind of the popularity of that product and how many people are actually searching for that particular product. And you can do the same with pretty much any product, any niche, whatever it is. So if that is one method that you want to give a go, then it's this add-on here and it's called Keywords Everywhere. It's 100% free. I'm not affiliated, whatever it is. Um, to be honest, I downloaded it for YouTube to try and find out the most popular keywords and terms, search terms for YouTube, but it also applies for Google as well. Um, and it does actually come in handy when doing niche and product research too. And then the third and final method I wanna show you, um, you will need a Google AdWords account to use this method, but I thoroughly recommend you actually get one, even if you just use it for this purpose, because it is um, such a such a good way of finding out um, pretty much how popular different search terms are. And as you can see, it gives you different search terms as well. So the way I got to here was, so if you just click on find new keywords, you can put whatever you want in there, your niche, your product, whatever it is. As you can see, I've already used dog bowl search terms as well. So again, if we were to just put, if we literally just wanted to go into the dog bowl niche, we can see it's got an average monthly search volume of 33,000 people. Um, the average monthly searches then, sorry, are between 10K and 100K. And one thing that it does do as well is it gives you a top of bid, a top of page bid, sorry, and a top of page bid and high range. It gives you a low range and high range. So you can see like how competitive a certain space is. So when you're doing your research, if you come across a certain term that is just like significantly cheaper than everything else, then it then it kind of gives you, potentially shows you like an opening in the market. Um, but again, you'd have to do your own research. So that's the third and final point then I wanted to show you. So the final thing then that I wanted to run through with you guys is the checklist because once you've found a niche, then what you want to do is ask yourself these questions against every single niche. And if you get a yes back for every single question, then you can pretty much guarantee you've found yourself a pretty good niche. So are others making money? Yes. If other 
other people are making money in it, then there should be no reason why you guys can't make money in it as well. Um, a passionate audience, again, if you've got a passionate audience, then it shows that people are interested, they've got a strong interest, they're already spending money in it, so why would they not spend money in it with you? Um, number three, can you target on Facebook and Instagram? So obviously just create an ad set, go into the detail targeting, put your niche or your product in there, whatever it is, see if you can actually target it. And again, look for influencers on Instagram within your niche and actually see if there are potential influencers that you could do business with. Um, upward trend, you can use Google Trends. I've already shown you how to do that. Just make sure that the graph is going higher and higher and isn't going down. Um, and then perceived value, I haven't, talking about this, I haven't spoken about this in the video yet, but what this basically means is that when you look at a certain product, so, I oh know, let's take this one here, so the bamboo wood kitchen things, you wanna make sure that the products you're selling has a higher perceived value than what you're buying at, or significantly higher. So, these bamboo wood kitchen spatula things, somebody, to us, they're gonna cost us a pound, but for somebody who's really passionate about reusable items and not using plastic, then they might be willing to pay, say, five, 10 pound per spatula, if that makes sense. You wanna make sure that the products you're actually picking just has a higher perceived value. And because you're playing on that kind of moral sense of saving the like saving the environment, um, it's the same thing with cars. Like Environmentally friendly cars, electric cars, are a lot more expensive than diesel and petrol cars, purely because, well, number one, the technology hasn't been as mass produced, but people don't mind paying that bit extra if it's for a morally like beneficial or good cause, if that makes sense. So people will pay more if it's going towards a good cause and saving the environment is something people feel really passionate about. So they'll, they'll be willing to pay that a bit more if that makes sense. And the same for these kind of products as well. So the reusable straws, so two pound for a pack of four, I could easily see somebody paying at least a 10 pound, maybe 15 pound for them, depending on how you brand them um, and how you sell them. So that means the thing guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. I apologize for been talking really quickly. There's been a lot to get through um, and I'm trying to make my videos just a bit shorter um, and just more jam-packed full of information so that being said if you're still watching i really do appreciate it thank you for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one